Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On today's video, I'm going to be making Argentine style beef ribs on the Sentara Pro Argentine Grill. Let's get going. So bear with me with the sun right now. It's starting, just starting its descent to the west. So at the moment, I've got some shadows that I just can't really deal with, but it'll be really nice here shortly. So at first glance for you guys, this looks like a bunch of like beef short rib bones cut from a rack. But, but here is what we have. These are actually uh, cut crossways, you know, like flank and cut, but pretty darn wide. I mean, at the very least three inches. And this is kind of a traditional way of cooking these beef ribs in Argentina. So Argentina, I hope I do you guys well. I, I have really fallen in love with the Argentine grill culture. I mean, I've been immersing myself in videos watching these gauchos cook. So what I'm going to do right now is season these very simply with some coarse ground kosher salt and some black pepper. Now for the pepper, and I intentionally left a decent amount of fat on these. These are going to be, you know, more grilled. It's going to render down and just be delicious. So as far as the back, that membrane, there's no meat there. There's basically no need to season that. So I'm just going to leave it on. It'll actually help those bones hold in place. And again, we'll just eat, slice them up into individual little bones and just <laughs> take that big chunk of meat off. It's going to be awesome. So other than that, once they hit the grill, I'm going to baste with this beautiful red chimichurri sauce. And here's how I made it. Some extra virgin olive oil. Some red wine vinegar. I have here garlic. I have a lot of garlic, 12 cloves of garlic. And I put this in the oven about 350 until they turned brown, you know, until they got nice and soft and brown. Take some of that harsh bite out and make it a little sweeter. Some shallot. Now we're gonna add some cilantro. I have a nice bunch of cilantro here. If you don't like cilantro, I know it's a kind of a, either you love it or you hate it thing. I would go with a flat leaf, like an Italian parsley. Throw that in there. I'm gonna get that mashed down because this stuff never wants to cooperate once you flip the blender on. Some smoked paprika. Some New Mexico, ground New Mexico chili powder. If you want to pump up the heat, a little pinch of cayenne will do it. So right here I have some coarse ground kosher salt, some ground cumin, and some red chili flakes. Alright. That looks really, really good. Alright, I have the pit ready to go back here. So let's get these ribs on there. So I'm burning red oak. I have a really good bed of coals under the bracero. Get these underneath just the radiant heat alone. Get these underneath where the ribs are. Some more fresh coals here. And it, it'll continue to feed fresh coals in as we cook here. Now right off the bat, I'm going to anoint these ribs with some of this red chimichurri sauce.
So I'm going to turn it to where it's sauce down. The ribs that did not get a baste, most of them, some of them I got on this, uh, this side while they were laying flat. Just wanna make sure they all get basted. So I get asked a lot, what temperature am I running? And basically I wanna have it to where, you know, good 15 seconds or so it starts becoming uncomfortable. I'm gonna raise it just a little bit. So now I'm going to just simply monitor the cook and I'm gonna keep these things turning, keep basting with that chimichurri, keep the goodness flowing. I, like, I get asked all the time, I get a lot of messages uh, regarding this cooker. You know, like what temps am I cooking at? <laughs> you got me, I don't know. This is primal, it's primitive and that's one of the things I'm really loving about it. I think it's making me a better cook. Um, I'm not relying on anything modern. I mean, I'm just going off of the feel. And like I've said in other videos, I mean, when I was standing in front of there, you get an idea what's going on with those ribs because it's, you got the bracero dumping heat. You got heat coming from below, from, you know, pretty far down below. And it's just bathing everything. And, and my face, I mean, I'm dripping sweat right now, getting bathed with that heat. And this is really enjoyable for me. Uh, it's like kind of a Zen thing. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna keep you guys posted. Oh, and so I don't forget, um, after I do the kind of the taste test and presentation of the ribs, I'm gonna show you guys, anybody who's interested, stick around how I clean this grill after I'm done cooking because I do it while it's still you know, hot. And um, I do this with all my grills. So if you wanna see what I do, then stick around. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a bit. So we're about a half an hour into this cook and this is going to be my second flip. So I, I flipped the first time about 15 minutes. I'm not timing this, I'm just more or less looking and listening to the ribs here. So let's go fat cap down this time. Put some of that fat render away. Smells really good. So um, as far as those ribs that are at the very back closest to the bracero, it is definitely a little warmer there, but it's not like real hot, if that makes any sense. I'm not concerned about those ribs, but what I will do in the name of even cooking is kind of do a rotation. So I'll pull the ribs that are closest to the front, put them to the back, and we're just going to keep cycling that way. Again, I'm, I'm flipping these every 15, 20 minutes, and I'm guessing this cook's probably going to be right around the three hour mark. We are at the two hour mark and I just wanted to kind of give you guys a visual update on the ribs. They're coming along really good. And in all honesty, what I wanted to do was show you this beautiful sunset we had. But by the time I went in and sharpened some knives up and I came out and this, it's like, where's the sun? It was gone. Uh, let's look at some ribs though. So I've been pretty much just sticking with a game plan and that is flipping these guys every 15, 20 minutes or so. I haven't really been keeping time and uh, giving them a good base with that red chimichurri sauce after the flip. So they're looking really good, really close to being done. I'm guessing it's gonna be another, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour before I pull them. So about 45 minutes have passed since I last talked to you guys and I just tested the ribs for tenderness and I'm pulling them, so check them out. So again, I'm not concerned with the temperature of these ribs. What I'm looking for is this, just nice and tender. Very little resistance at all. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these guys right now. All right, now for the first part of my cleaning routine on this grill. This thing is grimy and I do not wanna deal with this after everything hardens. I'm gonna get some charcoal down here, some embers. Let's go ahead and rake these underneath. And now I'm going to lower it. Let's 
Good. So basically my norm would be to have a nice dinner with my family. By the time we're done eating, this grill surface is going to be nice and hot and ready to clean. I'm going to show you how I do that after I give you guys a try of these ribs. Right here we are. Late video. Late video, guys. So, excuse the lighting. Anyway, um, here's all the ribs with the exception of one chunk, one three bone chunk that my wife is having right now. Kind of a late dinner for both of us. You can see nice and juicy. Again, smells great. Now remember these are more grilled than barbecue. I mean, I grilled them low and slow. So they, you know, they don't have any smoke ring, which is totally normal. Cheers. <laughs> I am just such a fan of red chimichurri now. So deep, deep flavor. I mean, I think you know, starting off right from the get-go with that cook basting, it's got a deep, rich flavor. As soon as you start chewing this, especially the pieces, you know, that have the little bit more of the fat on top, you instantly get that kind of a caramely texture. Really good. Wow. Another righteous cook on the Argentine grill. Anyway, guys, um, for those of you who want to hang around again, just a quick kind of a demo on how I clean this grate. Really quick for those who are going to bail on me. Don't bail. Modelo Negra. This is the type of food that this just goes so well with, this type of cook. And again, those of you who are bailing, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, make sure you're subbed. Ring the bell. Hit thumbs up if you like it. We're not done yet with the video, though, so... I'm hoping that you guys will stick around. Meet you at the grill. So this is what I'm going to be cleaning this with. It's a product I bought. They do not even know who the hell I am. It's called Grill Rescue. Um, it was invented by a firefighter. And this material here, it's kind of like a sponge wrapped in a, uh, it's either Kevlar or Nomex. I've got a lot of experience with Kevlar and that's what I think it may be. I mean, it, it, it kind of, feels like one layer of Kevlar, but it could very well be Nomex. Again, I don't have a whole lot of experience with that, but they're both high-speed textiles, and that's what this is. So first thing you want to do, and normally when I start my cook, I'm going to put this in a bucket of water. So I'm just going to kind of push it and let the bubbles come out. I want to get it saturated with water. Again, normally I would do this. I mean, while I'm cooking, it's going to be in, here, in the bucket here. Okay, so we have this down here getting hot. So the way this works is this scrubber, again, it's got this high-speed textile in it and a sponge. It's going to hit this hot surface and immediately steam, and it's going to clean off all... This is really cruddy right now, so check this out. And there we go. Let me crank this up so you can check it out a little better. So you can see this is pretty darn clean compared to what it was and this stuff was caked on. So the next thing I would do is as it dries and, it, and once it kind of cools down a little bit, I'm going to hit it with um, a little like canola oil, like Pam, you know, nonstick spray, or I, like, I really like flaxseed oil wipe it on and then kind of buff it off and it will just kind of help the seasoning get that nice patina on it anyway appreciate you guys that stuck around and i'll see you on the next video cheers